Okay. Okay, so I'm going to walk through the story, talk a little about it, and also go through the questions and the type of things that you should be including in your answers. It really bothers me that the reflection of the computer is on my glasses, so I almost look like an alien or a bug or something, but I can't seem to get the reflection off my glasses. Ugh. Okay. Anyway, um, let's go to it. So I am assuming that if you are playing this video right now, you have already listened to me read it or you have read it on your own. That's really important. I don't think you should stop and do the questions as you go along. When someone's reading you a story, you should always go through it um, one time. You get a much more consistent and full um, understanding of the story. So I'm under the impression that you've already heard the story or you've read it independently. Okay, so I am going into the story and it starts off by saying that it's a medieval romance. This is actually a very shortened version. When I read it in college, it was a much longer, more in-depth translated version. This is more of a student version and it was raunchy. That um, hostess's wife, the queen, or whoever she was, who came and tempted Sir Gawain, like she threw herself at him. So where this is a uh, considered a medieval romance, it was definitely through that sort of um, seduction that happened three times to poor, <laughs> that young knight, poor Gawain, he didn't know what to do with himself. Okay. Um, but it does include adventurous heroes. That's Gawain idealized love, which is uh, sort of the love between the Knights of the Round Table, the love that they have for King Arthur, the love that sort of keeps them going on those cold, miserable nights, um, exotic places, and supernatural events. Uh, there's a lot of magic, obviously, in this story. Okay. He completely fits the steps of the hero, um, Joseph Campbell's, that we saw in that video in the very beginning. Okay, there are, first is a question, do you know that one of the first translated was by Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings? And you had to say, yes, I did know that, or no, I had no idea. I'm pretending to be a student here, so that's why I already answered that first one. Another one, the story is considered a medieval romance. Hmm. We already have that information? Oh, I guess it is, yes. Okay, and both myself and Ms. Fernandez recorded readings of it. Pick one of the teachers to read to you. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one you choose but you can't go on until you get them. This is me reading the story below. If you wanted to read Ms. Fernandez, you would have to say, I'm not going to use it. Maybe I'll use Ms. Fernandez's version. You have to move on to hear that. <clears throat> and then Ms. Fernandez at this point has not uploaded hers to this, but it would be, hers would be there. And then you could say, no, I'm not going to use that either because you wanted to read it on your own. Okay. Now, here is the story. I put notes on the side. Ms. Fernandez also put notes on the side that are worthy of you looking at and worthy of you reading. Um, we don't put them there just for oh, ha-has. We put them there so you can have some more information. These are anecdotes. These are annotations. These are important things that if you were reading this on your own, you should highlight and look up yourself. This is what you, a good reader does, an active reader does. You have to seek more information than what is just in the text, but to deepen your understanding by finding out these higher level um, sort of questions and meanings. Okay, so they're all sitting around, having a great party, woohoo, woohoo, and then this guy comes in, 
and when I say double tap, so it you it always gets really, really big, and there he is, and he is something else. Yes. He's got the holly bow, bow, branch. <laughs> he's got the gleaming axe, and he's all very green. And he's got the green and gold on the horse's mane and the tail. Yep. So that's them. Okay. And everyone was like, what? And the guy's like, oh, you want to battle? Because they were always jousting. They were always, you know, dueling, whatever. And the green knight's like, no, no, no. I'm going to see if you guys are all that. Because you're knights of the round table, so you have to be all that. And he's like, I want to know. So, why was the green knight disgusted by the response he received by the company of knights? Hmm. I don't know. Because everyone jumped up to challenge him? Because everyone left the room? Because no one was paying attention to him? Or no one stood up to take his challenge? Hmm. I don't know. You need to make that decision and choose. Okay. Now we go through and Gwen says, I can do it because King Arthur shouldn't be doing it. Like you shouldn't be doing anything risky. <clears throat> Why would the other knights back or support Sir Gwen when he stood to take the challenge? Hmm. Choose from those four answers. Not difficult. Okay. <clears throat> Everything goes down. The green knight lowers his neck. Sir Gawain lifts the axe. Arrgh! Chops the head off. Just like a guillotine. One strike. Can't even imagine what that would be like to raise an axe and lower it on some guy's neck. Ugh, oh, brutal, really. Head falls right to the floor. You would think that would be okay, but no. Knight picks up the head, and the head still has eyeballs that are looking all around. And that's where we get this picture. Ah! And the head's still working, the eyes are still working. Just unbelievable. Still working. <laughs> okay. Then he gets on the horse. Whew. See ya. And reminds Gwen, don't forget. Okay. Now we get down to the next question. <clears throat> Why would everyone be sad to see Sir Gwen leave? Why were they so sure they would not see him again? Remember, a year and a day. So you are going to start your answer and you're going to say everyone is sad to see Sir Gawain leave because blah, 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 blah. They were so sure they wouldn't see him again because blah, 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 blah. Whatever you think, the information's always right there or just put two and two together. Why would everyone be so sad that Sir Gawain was leaving to go see the Green Knight? Okay, now as Sir Gawain, he accepted the challenge, right? So now we're like three, four. Now he goes off into the, um, to take on the challenge. And this is when he, he's going to, according to the hero's journey, he's going to encounter all the obstacles and the adversities and the fire-breathing dragons and the horrible weather and the piranhas. And so he goes through and he has this horrible journey very, very difficult. Sleeps out in the open most of the time. Just very difficult. But then comes across this castle. And the host is like, sure, come on in. Woohoo, we're having a great time. And it's this beautiful castle. Well, there really weren't. They were like these cold stone buildings. And that's why they had these tapestries hanging on them. What happened to my tapestry? 
Oh, I don't even see the picture there anymore. Wonder what happened to the picture. I'm going to have to work on that one. Hmm. And then the crone is there too. Now, here's our mystery. Here's our magic. Here's our probably she's not who she thinks she is because that's the way sort of um, people transformed and entered into other people's lives disguised as someone else. So when you come to her, you have to be like, mm, I wonder who that crone really is. Right. So they make so um, the host is like, eh, yeah, you got to stay. And oh, don't worry. It's right around the corner. You know, stay a little longer. It's like, all right, three. Remember, stay three days and you can stay three more. Three is a magic number. Very important. And it's like, all right, so three more days. You're here. No problem. Now, listen, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hunt with my buddies. I'll give you whatever I catch, whatever I slay. You give me whatever you get. Sir Coin's like, all right, I'm not going to be doing anything, but sure, they shake on it. Okay, guy goes off. Who? Enter Vixen, the hostess. She's all about him. And she's very persuasive. And if you saw a movie of it or read, you know, one of the more adult versions of it, wow, she's just hanging out all over the place. And she's trying to tempt him all she can. But he's a knight of the round table. You don't get tempted like that. You don't fall victim to it. Unless you're Lancelot. There have been several, but you don't do it. So he says, no. She goes, okay, just one kiss. So then the guy comes back. He goes, here, I got a deer for you. And he's like, all right, here's a kiss. <laughs> he's like, oh, who gave you that? Well, it could be anyone. I'm sure there's a bunch of young girls, maidens in the castle. It's not like there's only one person in the castle. But anyway, doesn't really say. That wasn't part of the deal. You didn't have to say where you got it from. Same thing happens the second day. Oh, we get the quiz. Why did he give his host a kiss? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Okay. Now, second day. Oh, now the host went out. He caught a bear and a goose. Doesn't even really compare. Like if you can, if you can <laughs> kill a, <laughs> a bear, and then you're like, I caught a goose too. It's like really not quite so impressive anymore after the bear. But anyway, the girl, she came back in again, that lady, and she gave him two kisses. So he had to kiss him twice. Okay. The third day, three is a magic number. She comes in and she's like, let me kiss you three times and I want you to take my girdle now a girdle we have come to sort of in modern america or the modern age a girdle is often what you would see maybe uh victoria's secret models wear they wear them under a dress it sort of holds in your center it's sort of um sometimes it's a bra and underwear all together but that's not what this is <laughs> medieval times the girdle is nothing more than this long silk sash that wrapped around them and she offers it he's like no 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 i can't take it and she's like don't you understand she's holding it here you can see there she is hmm it's that sash so don't you understand? Anyone that wears this is protected. Now, Gwen's the youngest knight, right? So I don't know how old he is. Maybe he's 17, maybe he's 18. Doesn't matter. He doesn't want to die. So he keeps the girdle. So when the guy comes back, he hands over the three kisses, but he doesn't hand over the girdle. Hmm. Here's the question. Why would Gwen 
feel uneasy once the guy comes back. What might be making him feel guilty or fearful or sad? Provide evidence from the text to back up your claim. And we're going to use that race strategy, right? First, we're going to restate what's being asked and answer it. Why does Gwen feel uneasy once the host comes back and he gives him the, I don't know, he only got one thing that night, right? He only, oh, he got a foul fox skin. Why did Gwen feel uneasy? He felt uneasy because, what did he do? What did he not do? What does he know? What does he not know? And then I need you to find some evidence in there, in that text. And you have to put that in as a direct quote. And after it, you have to put parentheses, para, whatever it's going to be. It's going to be, oh, I got to turn on paragraph things for this. It might be para 67. It might be para 89. I don't know what it is. I have to remember to do that. Okay. And then you have to elaborate. You can't just say, oh, yeah, he feels uneasy because he ate something and he's got a bellyache. And, you know, when you have a bellyache, you're sick. You can't just say that. You have to say, how does that moment connect to sort of, the big thing, how does eating that thing connect to this uneasiness about the whole thing? Gwen feeling uneasy or sad at that moment for one reason leads to or is symbolic of something bigger than. Don't write less than three sentences. Don't, don't. Make sure you have your evidence in there. Push yourself, four or five. Okay, push yourself. I have to write something so I can save the draft and I can move on. Okay. Now it's the new day. He's got to go. This little servant goes, don't, don't go down that road. Don't go down. I won't tell anyone. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> true then, true now. Don't believe people when they say, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> the only person you can trust <laughs> is your mother. <laughs> Don't think that you can keep a secret with this kid you barely know and it's not going to be a problem. But it doesn't matter because Gwen wouldn't do that anyway because he's a knight. He's not going to do that. So he goes. Why would Sir Gwen not take the servant's offer to keep a secret? Why wouldn't he avoid certain death? And you have to choose one of those four reasons. Okay, now he comes to this, you know, like cave entrance. And there's the Green Knight waiting for him like, Fancy you coming. So glad you showed up. Get ready, because we got a bargain here. And two times, because three is a magic number, two times when the axe goes up, oh, Gwen's like, huh, who wouldn't? There's an axe raised above your head. And he sort of gets mocked for it, sort of made fun of for it. <sighs> but then the third time the axe comes down doesn't kill him. Why? Because he's not the Green Knight anymore. Huh. He turned into someone else. So now this question is, what does, what has Sir Gawain just realized about his host and his hostess, the one that he stayed with for six days? What does he realize about them? Choose one of those four. And Gwen realizes, it like, my gosh, like this wasn't for real. This was, this was. And those was like, yeah, ha, come on. I'll introduce you to Morgan Le Fay. You know, she's really cool. She's, she's not, she's not crazy. She's totally crazy. See, she's always got creepy eyes. 
and all her, um, oof, yeah, she's this beautiful, but she's a witch and she's not really good, uh, situation between she and Arthur and, um, gee, sometimes she's really good and sometimes she's really, really evil. But yeah, that's Morgan Le Fay. And Gwen's like, no, I really don't want to go and hang out with her. I just want to go home. So he goes home and everyone's like, yay, you're back, you're back, you're back. But, you know, he wasn't 100% the night he was supposed to be. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was tested and mostly passed, but not 100%. Maybe 99%. Maybe 99.5%. And then here, you're going to write a summary of the story in three sentences. No more. No more than three sentences. But you have to try to include the basics about the story. What was the purpose of it? Where was it set in? You know, the conflict, the resolution. See what you can do for in three sentences there. Okay? And that's the last question. And then you're done. So let's get this done. You can get it done today. You can do it right now. Guaranteed, you can do it. I know you can. All right? Get it done.